Right now I'm using some direct light to get a lot of really high contrast on Steffi's face. We have here some really beautiful shadows that are coming across her face like right here. And um, I'm just using that to capture and to kind of create some interesting imagery. When you're shooting in direct light, you're gonna be mostly working with really high contrast shadows. So you wanna be thinking about what part of the subject you wanna have in the light and what part you wanna have in the shadow. So the next process that we're gonna do is focus on backlighting, the light coming from behind the subject. That's gonna give you a much softer glow and you're not gonna be dealing so much with these harsh shadows that you are when you're using direct lighting. Some people love high contrast, super dark shadows, super light lights, and other people just prefer a little bit more of a glow where you're gonna actually see more of your subject's face and be dealing less with shadows. When you're shooting an actual person, they have a round face, and certain focal lengths will make that person look a little bit more flattering. A longer focal length will sort of flatten the face out, and a shorter focal length will sort of widen it out. The mid-range of focal lengths is gonna serve your purposes the best for portraiture. The mid-range focal points are gonna be the most flattering to the subject. When we were at 200 millimeters, what we had was a flattening effect on the face. Now the opposite is happening as we get all the way to the wide end. So generally we recommend using a 50 millimeter or an 85 millimeter lens if you're gonna shoot portraits. It makes the face look more true to form, it's more flattering, and it's just gonna give you an overall better picture. I have this CD I just bring as a prop. Um, it's super easy to throw in my bag and it creates a kind of lens rainbow refraction right in front of your lens so you don't have to do anything in post. And I kind of just experiment it with how close or far I'm holding it from my lens and that way it'll give you kind of a different type of look whichever way you're holding it. What's nice also about using the CD is once you get a shot that looks like you have the rainbow kind of in frame in the edit, duplicate that and post it to a photo that actually didn't have the rainbow and then it's looked like you did it but you actually didn't in person. It's all about understanding how you can use context to take a better image. Just little things that you see without realizing help you form conclusions, and those conclusions can be helpful for storytelling. If you're taking a portrait of a scientist and you start to step into the laboratory, just seeing the space they're working with, seeing the, how small the things they're working on or how large they are, might give you better context when you're reading or learning about them. Environmental portraits are everywhere, and you don't really think about it. They're images for billboards, for movie posters, there are photos in the New York Times and National Geographic in your local newspaper. They are all helping you gain trust and context for a person or understanding of a person's situation, which then allows you to form conclusions which might have you buy something, see something, commit to something, or just be aware of it. So get in a position that that's comfortable for you. Maybe put the arm on the table. Good, good. So a little tip about posing. Posing is very, very important and it really adds to the mood and the emotion of the setting. Natural poses look the best and oftentimes when you have somebody assume a pose, let them put their own twist on it. Don't overcorrect the pose too much so it looks super unnatural. I told James to get comfortable and look, he's in a great pose and that's a really, really great place to start. 